We all love chicken fajitas, the flavor, the texture, the bell peppers, so why not add them to nachos? Let's not forget that creamy nacho sauce. This is going to be yet another great recipe, so let's get started. Can you buy the corn tortilla chips? Of course you can, but I assure you it is never going to compare to frying them yourself and it's super easy. So grab 25 corn tortillas and cut them into eight sections in the form of triangles. Now the corn tortillas you can buy, they work perfectly. Let's take our tortilla mountain to the stove, come on. In a large pot, heat about two to three inches of a good frying oil. I'm using avocado. Once hot, start frying those tortillas. Fry them in batches to prevent overcrowding and also prevent a significant drop in temperature. Once golden brown and crispy on both sides, transfer them over to a rack. Then hit them with a sprinkle of salt and continue with the rest. Hey, how about we ask first? Who else goes through this when they're cooking at home? I couldn't help it. <laughs> Set them aside until we need them. For the fajitas, prep two bell peppers and you can pick whichever color you prefer. Just remove the seeds and stem. Then slice them into strips, which are about half an inch in thickness. Transfer them into a bowl. And do the same thing with a medium yellow onion. I'm gonna be using one and a half pounds of boneless and skinless chicken thighs. To season it, we need to get started on the marinade. In a small bowl, add in one teaspoon of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of ground onion, one teaspoon of ground garlic, one teaspoon of ground ancho chile. If you don't have it, you can also do chili powder, half a teaspoon of ground cumin, one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt or to taste, freshly ground black pepper. This is going to be about half a teaspoon. Oh, I love the smell of freshly cracked black pepper. Measure out a quarter cup of a good smooth olive oil. Pour it in there. Also add in there three tablespoons of lime juice. Whisk to combine. Didn't I tell you this is super easy and so flavorful. Now coat all of the chicken in it. This is looking good, but the chicken is still cold. So I'm gonna leave it out for about 20 minutes. That way it's not so cold and it cooks evenly. Cook the chicken on a very hot pan. Ideally you want the heat to be around medium to medium high. Flip as soon as that bottom has browned. Yes, look at that. Make sure to fully cook the chicken and once the thickest parts of the thigh reaches 165 degrees Fahrenheit, both sides are nice and browned, remove them from the heat. The chicken has to rest for about five to 10 minutes. Turn the heat to medium high. Let the oil get nice and hot, then add the veggies, which is the onion and bell peppers. Stir them as needed and cook them to your desired doneness. I personally don't like them too soft. While that's happening, slice up the chicken or you can dice it for smaller pieces, up to you. The veggies are perfect, slightly soft. Now incorporate the sliced chicken. Turn off the heat and mix everything to combine. At this point, you can taste if it needs more salt, feel free to add some. Also, we're gonna give it a slight kiss of lime juice. It's really gonna open up those flavors. The chicken has reheated. Now let's just pull it off the heat, set it aside until we need it. I like to make the nacho cheese sauce last because it's best when served warm. In a medium saucepan and over medium heat, melt two tablespoons of unsalted butter, then whisk in two tablespoons of all-purpose flour and half a teaspoon of smoked paprika. Cook for about 30 seconds, then whisk in one cup of whole milk and let it reach a simmer as you whisk continuously. Also notice the mix will thicken. Turn the heat to low and whisk in four ounces of grated American cheese. I buy it from the deli department at my local grocery store. Instead of slices, I ask for the block of cheese and grate it myself. Once fully melted, do the same with eight ounces of cheddar cheese. I grated this one as well because it allows it to melt beautifully. 
feel free to add a bit more milk for a looser consistency just like I'm doing right now. Lastly, add in salt and black pepper to taste to make sure it's well incorporated. To assemble these nachos, I'll be using a small cast iron, but a sheet pan or plate is fine. Layer the chips, the incredibly flavorful chicken fajitas, be as generous as you like. Spoon some cooked black beans, which are rinsed and drained. Drizzle the warm cheese sauce all over, very easy to make and such a compliment to this dish. And just repeat the process with more chips, more chicken fajitas, beans, cheese sauce. There's just so much to love here. Finally, top with fresh guacamole. I'll leave the links to this recipe in the description box. Yes, that's right, some sour cream. Sprinkle diced red onion, add sliced serranos, and chopped cilantro. Wow, this recipe is a must. It's so delicious. The homemade chips are the base for so much goodness. It is nacho time. Ooh, am I excited. This looks beautiful like a work of art. Are you ready? What time is it? <laughs> nacho time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. Mm. Oh no. What have we done here? Mm. Wow. It's mm. that time of the day again. Or you get to sacrifice yourself. Yes. And taste the food. Mmm. This is gonna knock your socks off. It is so delicious. Mm. My goodness. So let's go over that sauce. I think we can say that that sauce pulls everything together. Oh yeah. I really hope you tried this recipe. Don't forget that you can follow me on all of my social media platforms. The full printable recipe is going to be available on our website. Viacocina.com. There you go. All right. Until the next one. Bye. Try the nachos, everybody. Mm-hmm.